Why are spoken word comedy albums being taken down from Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and others? Each time a sound recording streams in one of these services, there must be two separate licenses and two separate royalty payments made. One license and royalty is paid to the record label that controls the recording, and a second separate license must be obtained and a royalty payment made for the underlying work that is recorded. For example, in 1972, George Carlin, a comedian, recorded the comedy routine Seven Words You Can Never Say on Television for his album, Class Clown, which was released on Atlantic Records. Atlantic owned the sound recording, but George Carlin wrote the words that were recorded. Every time the Atlantic Records sound recording of George Carlin streams on Spotify, Apple Music, and others, or is broadcast on digital radio like Sirius XM or Pandora, there are two separate and distinct licenses two separate and distinct royalty payments, and two separate and distinct pipelines to pay the money. In this case, one royalty is paid to Atlantic Records for the recording, and a second separate royalty is to be paid to George Carlin for his words, assuming they were licensed. The question then becomes, how did the streaming music services get the rights to the recording and get the second separate right to the underlying work that was recorded? For the recordings, the streaming music services go directly to the record label, like Atlantic Records, and negotiate a direct license with them. It is a direct license that is signed by both sides that dictates the terms, the conditions, and the royalty amount. And a second separate license is also needed for his words. As it's not music, but a spoken word, the entity, like a Spotify, must go directly to George Carlin, or a company that works for him, and negotiate and get a license from them directly, this includes the amount of the royalty rate. So why then were these albums pulled down from the streaming music services? It appears that the streaming music services didn't bother to get that second license for the underlying literary works. They couldn't get the license through the Mechanical Licensing Collective, as the Mechanical Licensing Collective only licenses and collects for music. And if they did not get that license, and they're still using his copyright, they are infringing on his works. This is called copyright infringement. And in the United States, when an entity infringes on your copyright, and those copyrights are eligible, you can sue the entity that is using them without a license for something called statutory damages. And the law says that if an entity was willfully infringing on copyright, the amount of money that could be paid to the entity whose rights were infringed upon is up to $150,000 per infringement. So, for example, if George Carlin has 10 comedy routines on his album and all 10 went unlicensed for that underlying literary work, he could sue for 10 times $150,000, an amount equal to $1.5 million. But that's just one George Carlin album with 10 different comedy routines. What happens if there are 200 comedians representing over 2,000 comedy routines. In this case, the streaming music service can be sued for up to $300 million for willful copyright infringement. And this speaks to why those albums got taken down. By taking down the albums, it could limit the liability for the music service as it shows them trying to comply with copyright law and taking down albums where they may not be licensed to that second underlying copyright called the literary work.